gotta do for yourself, now you fed up Get your study on, all praise be to God, stay read up God never let up, everyone that I'm around already know what I'm about Build heaven on earth, gotta catch up Elijah Muhammad Muhammad Ali Sir, I come, I come back, now man, what about me? Assalamu alaikum, and welcome back to the Brother Ben X Show A lot of things that you're gonna be, um approach with and that's all it means in the bible when it says once you pick up your cross and follow me that you'll be persecuted see this is the thing the honorable Elijah muhammad taught us that the bible is 25 percent history and 75 percent prophecy well when i say the name jesus on social media for the most part people are going to say amen for the most part people are going to agree with that but when you say farrakhan when you say elijah then you're persecuted hated for their name's sake right you're, you're, you'll be lied on you'll be all these type of things will start to happen and um you just got to stay grounded you got to stay study up studied up and uh i would advise you to do a lot a lot a lot of studying before you start you know talking those who have stuck to it and followed it have been successful. See, there's a lot of people who joined the Nation of Islam over time, but they wasn't necessarily following it. So they'll tell you, yeah, you know, I used to be in the nation back in the day, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, I, I evolved. You evolved to what? What you doing now? Or is what you're doing producing more than what the nation produced? Is what you're doing producing more than somebody who's following the teaching to the T? And if it and even if it is, so what? Why you gotta down that? Because they have a track, we have a track record of people who follow the teachings have been successful. So you got to be careful, man, letting people in your ear. You <coughs> deceptive and they'll try to get you to go off the path. For example, people have made videos saying that I've been pushing the teachings, pushing the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, pushing the minister, pushing the nation. People are trying to make videos towards me. Put my name in it so I can see it. And they've been trying to get me off the path. Here's a few of those videos. Message. Recently was a black guy who, of course, said he used to be in the Nation of Islam. And, you know, saying that the Nation of Islam going to use me and pit me and all this here. Check out what he said. One of your problems, Brother Ben, as a young person, as a young man, because I was dedicated. I believe that the Nation of Islam would take care of me. I believe that the nation of Islam would take care of me. I believe that the nation of Islam would take care of me. As long as I follow my orders, as long as I do what I'm told, the nation of Islam would take care of me. This would be a delusional mentality. But I didn't know any better. I was 18 years old. But I didn't know any better. I was 18 years old. The nation of Islam was something beautiful to look at. The nation of Islam will use you for whatever you can give to it. There will be no benefits to you. Ask anybody what is their actual benefit. All right, as y'all can see, got the brothers with me today. Islam Lake family. Going out with the final call, man. What has the teacher done for you? Hey, show me character, perseverance, and the struggle of our people is more important than uh, uh, our personal uh, achievements and anything else that we could personally want in life. And what about you? Shoot, I've been taught to, like you said, struggle with what I know is best and um, love my people. Be the savior for my people. I learned to do that. Take my craft and gain my people and use it like a magnet and attract the real to me. Nobody is getting nothing out of the nation of Islam except Louis Farrakhan and those who are close, like I said, within that circle. Selling newspapers, selling final, uh, uh, selling bean pies or whatever. Nobody's looking at what is in the best interest of me. The nation of Islam did not encourage me to go to college, did not encourage me to go to, uh, to a trade school or anything. I'm a bean pie salesman and newspaper sales. That's all. Because I put my time in. If it was not for my work, if it was not for my time, if it was not for my sacrifice, y'all couldn't say or do nothing. Now, I like I said, I put all this time in. Nobody's looking out for my future. Nobody's doing nothing for me. Nobody's doing nothing for me. 
So when you get a little buffeting over here and a little shaking over there and a little hurt over here and a little rejection over here, don't get excited because worse things happen to Jesus. Yes. Don't give up. Don't get emotional. You see what happened? I became a believer. I gave my money. I sold papers. I did whatever they told me to do. I'm a bean pie salesman and newspaper salesman. That's all. Because I put my time in. If it was not for my work, if it was not for my time, if it was not for my sacrifice, y'all couldn't say or do nothing. I sold papers. I did whatever they told me to do. Then what happened? They had a picking somebody to be a lieutenant, and it passed right over me. They chose that person, and they didn't work as hard as me. They didn't do as much as me. I don't see how they get. <laughs> I'm leaving. You mean you're going to blow the course, man, over something like that? Right. If I had known you were such a punk, I would never have invited you to this. Man. But you start acting very emotional when you don't get what you want, when you want it. Now, I made a comment and uh, was basically saying that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't set up this nation so that we can be beggars of the black man. He already told us not to be beggars of the white man, so why would he make us beggars of the black man? So Yourself, know you fed up, get your study on All praise be to God, stay red up I never let up, everyone that I'm around Already know what I'm about, build heaven on earth Gotta catch up Elijah Muhammad Muhammad Ali, Sarah, come out, come now man What about me? In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program, known here on the World Wide Web. Some of y'all still call it the World Wide Web. You uh, are here on social media, whatever you whatever you choose to call it, because y'all know y'all like to argue and debate stuff. But what, however you choose to call it, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, angel snub nub seven. I am your soul brother number one. And your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, right before I made my most marvelous appearance, we saw our little brother, Brother Ben X. And I would guess that Brother Ben X is waiting to become a Muhammad like all the other people in the nation of Islam. I've never seen such a thing. I believe Allah has over 100 attributes and the whole nation of Islam that he belongs to, everybody is carrying the, the last name of Muhammad. And they don't, and he does not see that there's a problem. Nobody don't see that that's insane. It's like an assembly line. It's like when you are going through an assembly line and all the cars, you put Ford on it or you put GMC. There's no other name where you can't because this is a product. See, that's what you do to a product. So when 
you buy your out uh your iPhone, it's an Apple. And all the ones that came off that assembly line have the same name because it came off an assembly line. It's a product. And what you see here in our poor brother Ben is he is a product of an assembly line. And just like all the rest that was manufactured waiting on his Muhammad. Everybody is a Muhammad. So when you say when you go into the into their temple and say phone call for Muhammad, <laughs> phone call for Muhammad, don't everybody turn around. Ain't that don't you don't y'all maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Oh my. I, I should have had me something to drink. I wanted to because I have a lot to cover here real quick. And Brother Ben really Brother Ben really did did Angel Snuff number seven in, didn't he? Oh wow. Well, not really. He tried. But I'm gonna have to try to put this young brother in check. Now here he is. He really don't know the teachings. He's telling other people, you need to study. You need to study. But he does not take his own advice because you're going to try to challenge. You're going to try to debate somebody who has been in the nation, have known the teachings ever since I was eight years old. And I am over 50 years old now. And I am proud to be over 50 years old. Many of you will not see 50 years old. When you don't, or when you say something people don't like, uh, you an old man, you. I have made it to see 50. In fact, doing pretty well. Uh, matter of fact, um, I got an email from my, my doctor. Everything is cool. Um, I do need to exercise a little more. I'm going to get on that program. And I would be just as fit as some of y'all youngsters. Because y'all ain't made out of too much. You physically ain't made out of too much. And you definitely mentally. You cannot do nothing with me brother Ben X. You can't. Because you don't know. I'm trying to tell you something little brother. The only thing you have to do is say. Okay bro. Uh, sir I understand what you're saying. And uh. I, I, I'm, I'll just rather see. But instead, you're going to try to make mockery of me, as you, as, as you saw, because you're upset. And the reason why these get upset is because truth hurts. Now, I don't want to keep y'all long. I, there's a lot of different a lot of things I want to comment on. I, I wrote myself a few notes so I I can touch on it. I don't want to forget because this is the last time I really need to address this issue. You cannot help some people. They think that you are attacking them. They are loyal to Jesus. They are loyal to Farrakhan. They are loyal to whomever. You are attacking me. And you trying to drive. I'm not trying to convert you to nothing. I'm not trying to. And did not tell you to leave your faith. Or any of these things. Don't tell a lie. I'm telling you my experience. I'm telling you the truth of what you are involved in. Just like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad always say. You can take it or let it alone. But you cannot ever say you did not know. Because a brother came to you and told you exactly what the deal was. You didn't want to listen. But one day, this video, one day, not only myself, but even in the comments, you were warned and people was telling you. But one day, you will find out. Because see, you're a young man now, and you and you are smitten, and all this hype, flavor flavor from public enemy said, "Don't believe the hype." I never fell for it. 
you know, and what's so sad is that he made a video, and even in the comments section, people really wasn't rolling with Brother Ben X. Because he just he just don't know. Especially when he's coming against a brother, I've been where you are at. I know where this is going. Seen it too many times. Let us let us talk about this real quick and let's go home. Shall we? Surely. Well, in the beginning of Brother Ben X introduction, he talks about Farrakhan, Elijah Muhammad, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, what about me? And when you see the introduction, there's a picture of Elijah Muhammad, there's a picture of Farrakhan, of course, and a picture of Muhammad Ali, and, and a picture of Brother Ben. There's, there's no picture of Malcolm X. Why is that, Brother Ben? But you said Malcolm X. What about me? But where is Malcolm X at? You didn't put him in there. See, there's a reason why. Because, oh, wow. See, you talk about hypocrisy. And you don't even know what a hypocrite is. A hypocrite is trying to be something that you are not. Pretending to be something that you are not. Do your research, Brother Ben. A hypocrite comes from a time when men did not allow women to act on the stage. So men would dress up like women and pretend to be a woman in the play. That's where you get the word hypocrite. Because the man is pretending to be something that he is not. Louis Farrakhan does not like Malcolm X. Period. Because if Louis Farrakhan confessed to actually like Malcolm X, then he must deny Elijah Muhammad's actions. And he will not do that. And he's trying to play both sides because people love Malcolm X no matter what he said in the 80s. No matter what he said in the 90s, if it was not for Louis Farrakhan, I would not even know anything about Malcolm X. Malcolm X is a hypocrite. Malcolm X is a traitor. I've done my own research on Malcolm X. I did not come to the same conclusion. Many of my relatives and some of the other brothers and sisters in the temple were angry with me because I side with Malcolm X. That's your problem. I'm going to side with the righteous. I'm going to side with truth. I don't care about popularity. I'm not loyal to nobody. I'm not a loyal to Farrakhan. I'm not loyal to Elijah Muhammad. I'm only a law, a, a loyal to what we call or what I call the real truth. Righteous behavior. And what Elijah Muhammad done was not right. I don't care what messenger he was from what kind of messengers is this god producing you sneaking around with young women getting babies and then you punish the young women for fornication and you're the one they are fornicating with and y'all support that kind of behavior because he's some kind of messenger a messenger of what i love elijah muhammad with all my heart he was the only father that I really knew when I was a little boy. But when you're wrong, I'm going to tell you, Daddy. But when you're wrong, you're wrong, Daddy. And Daddy taught me. Elijah Muhammad said, stand on the truth regardless. Speak the truth regardless of circumstance. That's what Elijah Muhammad, my father, told me. And I don't give a damn. Even if it's him, I'm going to stand on it. You are not exempt. Messenger of Allah, you are not exempt. The, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan ain't nobody exempt. When you're wrong, you're wrong. 
If I'm wrong, then I suffer the consequences of my actions. When you wrong, I don't care who you are. Who the hell are you? Elijah Muhammad's actions did all this. Elijah Muhammad is at the root of why Malcolm was murdered. Because Malcolm was a sincere, honest person. And he stood on what Elijah taught him just like I did. And when they began to attack Malcolm like that, those type of behaviors and actions was even against the Quran itself. And many people left the nation because they saw that there, that there were many people, especially in leadership position, that was not acting as a Muslim should act. Farrakhan and even Elijah Muhammad and all those people, they were not acting in, in accord with what the Quran teaches. Malcolm should never have been murdered. Leave that man alone. But they messed with Malcolm because Malcolm was going to be competition. Malcolm made the nation what it was. He's the one. His work brought the nation to the level it was. So why can't Malcolm do that for himself? He was competition and basically Malcolm was murdered because you messing with my money. That's the reason. Not because he was a hypocrite and a traitor. Malcolm was competition messing with my money. Where is Malcolm X's picture in your introduction, Brother Ben? You say that one must study. Study, study, study. I hear people say that all the time. You have to study so that you'll know. So when people come and they question and all this, you'll be ready for them. What do you really mean by study? What you really mean by study is how can I justify, listen, woo, how can I justify rejecting truth when it comes to me? That's what you mean by study. Many people in the nation of, of Islam have been successful. That's what you say. And they have been successful and would have been successful with or without the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam gets credit just like you give Santa Claus credit. Santa Claus ain't bringing no children, nothing down no chimney. It was you that done it. And y'all do the same thing with the nation of Islam and these gods. You give them credit for your work. For what you do. Then you had to flip flop. You had to flip flop and say. Because there are people who's not in the nation of Islam. They are successful. So you have to flip flop. So what are you doing? Okay, so what? Why you got a rag on us? The nation of Islam rags on people all the time. You just talked about what you're doing. You're not successful like us. But that raises the question, exactly what has the nation of Islam done? And you refuse to answer the question. And all these Muslims refuse to answer the question. The question that I raise simply. Dr. Martin Luther King. His work. And the people that follow him. They change the policies and the laws of this nation. That we all benefit right now today. The Black Panther Party. Gave us, gave our children free school lunches and gave us medical care. Along with struggling, of course, for us. Fighting for justice for us. What exactly, besides pretty speeches and talking a bunch of crap, what exactly 
did the Nation of Islam do? With Elijah Muhammad or with Louis Farrakhan? What community? Show me what did the Nation of Islam do? They created jobs. Created jobs for who? Who retired from a Nation of Islam job? What exactly do the Nation of Islam do? There are criminals in our history that gave away turkeys and other things during Christmas. Criminals that have done more for the black community than the Nation of Islam. And that's a fact. I quote that from King Noble. That's, that's a fact. I never told you to leave your faith. I don't care what you believe. I'm just bringing you something and letting you know about other people's experience. I'm not the only one. There are others. And what we're telling is the truth. But when we are so smitten, just like when we are hyped up over some girl. The girl is a, I'm sorry to say this, the girl is a hoe. You don't want to believe it. She's the best thing in life. Until one day, you catch that girl in the whole house. And you done treated her like this big shot queen and she's so clean and pure. That's what she was all the time and you wouldn't listen to nobody and now you feel like a fool there are many who could come out here and testify about their experience in the nation of islam they won't do it because many of them they feel like a fool they was taken i don't feel like a fool because i never was taken i was too smart I gave it the benefit of a doubt. Gave the nation seven, nine years. I saw that it was going nowhere. You're not going to use me. Brother Bill says, some black guy, he says, <laughs> that's what he called. He does not, now this is, I have not done anything to this brother. He won't call me a brother. I'm some I'm some black guy. What does that tell you? You can't even call me your brother because you don't like what I have to say in the nation of Islam. And you say every time you see a black man, you see God. But because you disagree and don't like what I say, I'm, I am God whether you like it or not, Brother Ben. Malcolm X was God and you shot him down in front of his Wife and his children. That don't change nothing. You say every time you see a black man, you see God. So you shoot God down in the in the ballroom. And you call this God some black guy. Won't even call him brother. What does this tell us about your spirit, brother Ben X? Talking about my spirit. You won't question my sincerity, my honesty. Anybody that knows me knows I'm loyal, I'm honest, and I'm sincere about anything that I get involved in. But also at the same time, when I find out that you feel, uh, you feel with you, <laughs> tongue tied, you full of bull. Whole new ball game. So, Brother Ben is going to tell these people and show my face, but he's not going to tell the people who I am. Let them come and talk to me. Let them come and hear me. He puts a, a close-up on the video so my logo won't be shown. Won't tell the people who I am. Why don't you tell the people who I am, Brother Ben X? What is it that you're scared of? What is it you're scared of coming from the black guy? Taking a sound bite from my video.
and manipulated the same thing that the crackers do. Farrakhan complained about the same thing when he makes speeches and the crackers come and take sound bites and try to make it into something that he did not say. And here you are, oh, here you are, Mr. Holy and Righteous. You do the same thing to another black man. Same thing that the crackers do. What have the nation of Islam done for me? And these young brothers, y'all sincere. I, it's, I'm not trying to, just bear with me. It's a, it's a little emotional for me. I know it's emotional for you. But uh, we're just talking here. You got to understand something here. Ain't nobody trying to hurt you. I'm telling you of my experience. Other brothers and sisters are coming on your page trying to tell you their experience. You don't want to listen. That's your business. All I want to know is you can't say that you was not told. You was not warned. So these young brothers, what have the nation of Islam done for you? And they talk about, you know, I, I, I can't, I, I forgot exactly what they said. It's here on the video. But the same thing comes from the church. What Jesus done for you? What Jesus, what Christ done for you? Same kind of stuff. What, but it really, it has not done nothing. If you allowed yourself to think, it has not done nothing no more than what you could have done for yourself if you only if you only gave your brain a chance to deal with your problem, deal with the situation. So because somebody um has given you some advice, help you out. Now I'm supposed to be your damn slave? The teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. It says that the duty of the civilized man is to is to civilize the uncivilized. That's the duty of the civilized man. So if Elijah Muhammad brought me civilization or if Farrakhan brought me civilization I don't owe them nothing. I don't owe you nothing. That's your duty. I'm not supposed to be your slave. I'm not supposed to follow you. That's your duty. To civilize the uncivilized. I owe you nothing. I'm not your slave. But that's what they're getting. That's what they're looking for. Converts, followers, a bunch of robots and slaves off the assembly line. So next thing you know, I'm brother Talik Ibn Ra Muhammad. Coming off the same assembly line. A robot. Brother Ben says he knows the teachings. In the title of his video, he says, X Nation of Islam Follower. If you know the teachings, brother Ben, then you know I am a Nation of Islam member, whether I like it or not, forever. I was never in bad standing. I always was in good standing. Even when, even when uh, I, I, I pissed them off, even when some brothers talk about I was insubordinate, I never was in bad standing. <clears throat> when you get your ex, the Nation of Islam puts your name in what they call the Book of Life. I wrote and I called National Headquarters, told them who I was, and I told them I would like for my name to be taken out of the Book of Life. And they said, we can't do it. I don't want no part of it. But see, now you don't like somebody and they ask you take my name out of your book 
and you don't want to do it. So, technically, I'm not an ex, as far as the nation of Islam is concerned, all brothers and sisters, whether you are in or out of the nation, your name is in, or you, and you got, you earn your ex, you are in the book of life. You want to call me a hypocrite. Now, I will tell you quite honestly, I've always had a problem with religion. What I liked about the nation of Islam was the love of black people part of the teaching. I never really cared too much about the religious side. But I wanted to join. I wanted to be part of it. So... I sincerely tried to believe in this God and all these spaceships and all this other stuff, the teachings. But I was not a hypocrite. I did not pretend. I always told people I had a problem with this part of the teachings or that part of the teachings and whatever. Maybe as time grew or went on, maybe, I, maybe my understanding I will grow into understanding. I've always, even as a young Christian, I've always questioned this God thing. I always had a problem with that anyway. <clears throat> so Brother Ben has me on here. And I'm upset the way Brother Ben is showing. I'm upset because... <clears throat> I'm I'm upset because uh, excuse me this this telephone is throwing me off a little bit but I'm upset in Brother Ben's video the way he has me portrayed because the Nation of Islam didn't do nothing for me. Well, <clears throat> I was 18 years old, just out of high school. I never had a job. Basically, I'm still a child. Teenager. I'm in the mosque. I'm working for free, basically. I'm cleaning up the mosque. I'm driving a little ice cream truck, making a few dollars, selling bean pies and newspapers and whatever. Now, he says... That the teachings tell us that we're supposed to do for self. <clears throat> cool. How do you do it, Brother Ben? What do you mean, do for self? What, what do I have to do? What, what's the process? He does not explain the process. What do you mean, do for self? And why do I need the nation of Islam to do for self? You so stupid. You didn't know that you should do for yourself? Everybody that I know of, they automatically do for themselves. They leave their mama and daddy home, get them a job, and they do it for themselves. You, Why do we need the nation of Islam to tell us we need to do for self? What, what's the process? But here you are. We have a young man. I was the youngest in the temple. A young man, never had a job, actually ignorant to a lot of things in life. Don't you know, I was 18 years old and didn't know what a prostitute was. I would take my final call newspapers and I would go into massage parlors and... Uh, when I would come out the massage parlors, people would be looking at me because they knew I was a Muslim and these massage parlors was actually houses of prostitution. I did not know. I didn't know what a prostitute was. That show you how naive I was. And really, I did not care. I took the fight call newspaper to the bars. I took the fight call newspaper to churches. I took my fight call newspapers worth 
all the gang members hang hanged out. In fact, one of the gang members put a gun to my head and told me, I don't want to hear that Muslim bull. I did it all by myself. Used to went into the Cabrini Green housing project by myself. Walked the streets of Brooklyn and Queens all by myself with the newspaper. You know why? Because I really believe God will protect me. I wasn't worried about nothing. Because I felt Allah will protect me. Brother, you shouldn't go and do that. But I'm, I don't, God is with me. Then, of course, I would sell the papers and whatever with the brothers. I didn't have no fear. Went out and did it all by myself. You're going to call me some hypocrite. And even though I questioned God, I still had faith in the teaching. If Elijah Muhammad said, God going to protect me, I had faith in Elijah. And I went on out and did what I had to do. You 18 years old. And you have brothers. You have older men. These people. Should be and they should be responsible for the younger people in the mosque. Just like you are responsible for your children at home. You see a brother. You're not able to employ him. You're not able to make it where he's able to make a decent living. You need to go to that young man, to that young woman and tell them, look, I understand that you got all this energy and you want to help us, but you need to do a little something a little different. You're a young person. Everybody here is older. They, they, they've been on their jobs for years or whatever. You need to find you a little job. You need to get into school. You need to push it. But nobody did that with me. I want to remind you, Brother Ben, since you know the teachings, then you know I want for my brother what I want for myself. Would you want to be sitting around in the, in the temple, wasting your time away, 24 hours a day, selling pies and sweeping the floors and doing all that? You're wasting away. You say that you know the, the teachings, then you also understand that half of what a brother have, the other half is mine. Whatever you have, half of it belongs to me. That's the teachings, Brother Ben. Now, if that was true, this should not be no problem because I can still do what I'm doing and the other brothers will support me, but they did not. Whatever they earn, that belong to them. Whatever they have, that belong to them. And nobody cared about the little man, the little brother that was doing the work. Every time they came in, the temple was clean, the grass was cut, the pies was being sold, newspaper extra, because I was there doing the work all the time. Of course, that got old. And you told me I need to do for self. So, Brother Ben, I decided I'm going to do for self. Because clearly, because I wanted more in life than what was happening here. Ain't nothing happening. Nothing's happening here. So I did. I went to electronic school from, it was electronic school that I went to from 8. To 2 o'clock, I went to this electronic school. Then by 5 o'clock, I was washing dishes. I washed dishes from 5 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the morning and did this Monday through Friday. And most times on the weekends, I was too tired. I might go to the temple on Sunday. Now, I have another problem because now the brothers talk about, we don't see you. I'm doing it for myself. If you wanted to see me like that, 
why do you support your brother that was doing the work? Since you got to work a job, support me doing what I need to do. Nobody, give me half of the, of the soup that belongs to me. And everything would have been all right. Now you angry at me because you don't see me. I'm not on the street corners no more with you. I'm not selling the bean pies and stuff with you. Now you angry again. You're not going to win with these people. And if I could do for myself, what the hell do I need Louis Farrakhan for? Why should I follow Elijah Muhammad? Since I can, I'm doing all this on my own, what I need them for? What do I need God for? If I'm doing all this on my own and can do it, what I need to follow, pray to God for? I'm doing all the work. What I need Louis Farrakhan for? I'm doing all the work. Oh, wow. I want to conclude this talk <clears throat> on this note in response to Louis Farrakhan calling people a punk because they decide to leave the nation of Islam under his, under his leadership. You gonna call some, really? You gonna call somebody a punk? Was the people a punk when they was given to the number two poor? Take care of you and your family and all your croonies that's around you right now? Was they a punk when they were standing in front of you willing to take a bullet? Was they a punk? The nation of Islam is supposed to represent freedom, justice, and equality. If a brother or sister deserve a position and they earned it, why shouldn't they get it? That's justice. You don't give it to somebody else, a position to somebody else who don't even deserve it. That's not justice. Y'all a bunch of liars and the real hypocrites pretending to be something that you are not. Why would you give that position to somebody that don't deserve it? Maybe you sleeping with their wife. Maybe you sleeping with their daughter. Maybe they kicking you some extra money underneath the table. Freedom, justice, and equality. You don't call somebody a punk. What you need security for? Don't you trust in Allah? I did. I went into the houses of prostitution, bars, and other places where I could have got seriously hurt and didn't care because I sinned and I knew that God had my back. Why don't you do it sometime? You gonna call somebody a a punk, and you ain't nothing but a, a professional beggar. Got Brother Ben and all these other guys on the street hustling, taking care of you. If Brother Ben and all these other people can do for them what they need you for, your teachers, they don't need you to teach them nothing. The only thing they need is message to the black man. Our Savior has arrived. Fall of America, how to eat the little book one and two. What they need you for? Follow you for what? A leader has a responsibility. When I was a young person, the leadership, the older brothers and sisters in that temple had a responsibility to the young. They failed. Just like fire cut is a failure as a leader, period. And that's just the reality of it. The reality of it, that's the bottom line. If you don't like it, that's your personal problem. Farrakhan is incompetent, a celebrity seeker, a bunch of mouth, justice or else. Justice or else what? You ain't gonna bust a great. You'll make threats and get people killed like what you done to Malcolm. Malcolm X, what about me? Don't have no picture of Malcolm. So I started doing for myself. Then they get mad because I'm not around. But if they had 
practiced and acted on the teachings that they claim they believe in instead of being stingy wouldn't have been no problem. You got a brother doing the work that you can't do because you working a damn job. Nobody asking for much. I'm doing the work that you claim you want to do. It's all a bunch of bull. I have relatives right now been with Farrakhan ever since the very beginning. Don't have nothing because of Farrakhan. Everything they have is because they work the cracker job. Just like you. Whatever you get, directly or indirectly, talk about do for self. Do for self and you're going to pay this, these crackers taxes. Do for self and the cracker still going to get his. You're going to continue to pay to be terrorized by this maniac. Separation. The nation of Islam have never attempted to separate. Never. Except make y'all docile and want to live comfortable just like Farrakhan live comfortable where he's at right now. And I can guarantee you, you talk all this do for self, I can guarantee you Many of his followers are on food stamps and unemployment. I can guarantee you. Or they barely making it like I was when I was 18 years old. But from the outside looking in, we all looking good with the bow tie, pretty suits, running around. If I knew what I know now, I would have never joined the nation of Islam. There was no benefit. Just like any other religion. The only thing the nation of Islam do, like any other religion, is take. That's all they do is take. Don't give nothing. You pretend like you're getting some kind of benefit. You ain't getting no real benefit. What type of benefit? Because if you're getting some kind of real benefit, then you should be able to give to others. So what are you giving to others since you, this is such a great benefit? Except some talk. Oh, I get my reward because they don't eat pork. People been eating pork for centuries. So what? You will probably die before somebody that eat pork. Tripping off some pork. Some religious dogma nonsense. And when it's all said and done, you're still a Negro slave living in America. And you have supreme wisdom. And it has not done nothing for you. Nothing. Nothing of substance. You want to get angry because people who have already lived that life come to tell you. It's not what you think it is. I never was like that. I'm not a slave to nobody. I understand that what I feel today could be wrong tomorrow. Because I'm not interested in a popularity contest. I'm interested in the truth. And your teacher Elijah Muhammad taught Stand on the truth, regardless the circumstance. That means you too. So when the nation becomes wrong, I'm not going to stand with you. Now when you're right, I stand with you tooth and nail, all the way to the last man. But when you're wrong, I can't do it. You follow Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan is a confessed hypocrite. Saying it out of his own mouth. Louis Farrakhan does not represent the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam is destroyed. If Louis Farrakhan represented or was the nation of Islam, 
then he could claim the intellectual property. He can't make a claim to intellectual property because Louis Farrakhan is not the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam and everything about it is now in the public domain. Anybody can be the nation of Islam. Anybody. Louis Farrakhan followed Wardeen Muhammad. Wardeen Muhammad was friends with Jim Jones. Jim Jones caused black folks to have, was involved in that mass suicide. Louis Farrakhan is now involved with Dianetics, some other crackers. Louis Farrakhan has, has uh, biracial grand, uh, grandchildren. A Caucasian daughter-in-law. That's not that's not Elijah Muhammad's teaching. Elijah Muhammad said clearly, "Do not change my teachings." That's why when you listen to Louis Farrakhan, he makes very little reference to the actual materials from Elijah Muhammad. It's all about him. Do not change my teachings. But he has. Elijah Muhammad said there would be no successor. He did not leave a successor. The believers, when Elijah Muhammad died in 1975, chose Warren D. Muhammad, not Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan was his representative. And Warren Muhammad was a known Hypocrite. Actually, he wasn't a hypocrite. He told his father, I don't believe these teachings. And they chose him over Farrakhan, who's supposed to be a believer. They chose the disbeliever over the believer. A house filled with madness. And they deserve to be destroyed because of what they've done to Malcolm X. Almost 10 years to the day they killed Malcolm, the whole nation fell down to nothing. And the nation of Islam that you see today is nothing but an illusion. It's not real. It's Farrakhanism. Elijah Muhammad said, take it or let it alone. I'm just telling you, little brother, but you really don't know. But see, those who are older than you, those, those in the upper echelon, they know. Bring them to me. Bring them. I know the teachings. You really don't know. You're new. And all this stuff fascinates. It, 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 who, you better don't believe the hype. Get, forget the hype. Look at it as what it is. It's no better than Christianity is. It's no different. You will be a loser messing around with, with Reverend Mudflop in the church and you are a loser with Louis Farrakhan. Those people don't give a damn whether you are living or dead. When you, when you can no longer be used they don't give a damn about you no more. That's just how it is. How many people that went in and how many people have left? Good people. I know they was good. Sincere people. I know they was good. They came into our incompetent house. The man is not a leader. I'm not going to call him a con artist. But I, I do know that he's incompetent. He's not a leader. He's a follower of a dead person. Elijah Muhammad taught against that. What do you expect from a man who follow dead people? Well, with that said, I, I don't say all that I couldn't say. But, uh... <laughs> Minister Farrakhan calling somebody a punk. 
because they don't, they have decided, I'm not going to let you use me no more. Boy, you got a lot of nerve. You're nothing but a professional beggar. Get a job. I'm not going to pay for your wife and your children and all that. Get a job like everybody. Do for yourself. Got a lot of nerve. Stop letting these people use you, Brother Ben. All these Muslims, stop letting these people use you. That's all these religions do. Is leech off of your, your good heart. They only thing they do is take. When was the last time you got a bean pie for free? You don't get nothing. But if that's what you want to do, then so be it. I just I just shed a tear for you because I already know. I know. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. Brother Ben. See, I'm calling you Brother Ben. I'm not I'm I didn't say that that, that young fella, that light skinned black guy or something. I didn't say all that. I'm calling you my little brother. I like Brother Ben. He's respectful. He's civil. He's a he's a good person. But see, when we get involved in these religions, and it it, it I've seen good people turn so bad because of these religions. They their heart becomes so evil and wicked. How can you become so evil and wicked when your religion is supposed to be of peace, of love and joy? I I don't understand it. Just because somebody says something that you dislike. And what it is, and the reason why you act that way, is because truth hurts. You hear the truth. It hurts you to your core. But instead of accepting the truth, you would rather fight against it. And you're going to find out that you pay hell of a consequence when you fight against real truth. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Love you, Brother Ben. In fact, actually, I love Louis Farrakhan and the nation and all the soul brothers and sisters. But you know, we got to we have to we have to get real. Cause if we don't get real, <laughs> it's just it's it's a done it's a, if we don't get real, it's it's a done deal. Stop playing games with these races. As important as Don Cornelius always said, until next time, y'all, uh, I wish us love, peace, and soul.